Hi everybody! Okay, so this is the review I was just talking about in my blog, which I'm not sure which one of these is going to get released first, but this is done second, so I'm going to say I just talked about it because I really did just talk about it. I don't really care in which order these come out. And so here is the review of the things that I was talking about that you may or may not know I was talking about. So, um, first we're going to talk about Papillon, Hannah Tocho. Um, it is a story, basically, about a girl named Ageha, and she has a twin sister named Hana. Now, Ageha means butterfly, I believe? For some reason, that's bringing up butterflies in my head, but I think that has something to do with a manga that's got a butterfly symbol for a girl that makes purses. I wonder what I'm thinking about. Anyways, um, but Hana means flower. Yeah, I think a geha is butterfly and then Hana is flower because that would be pretty. And it would explain the cover, which has butterflies on it. But basically, you have a story about a girl named a geha and her twin sister, Hana. Hana is really pretty and beautiful and good at everything, where a geha is kind of not. And so a geha falls in love with a guy that she's been friends with since her childhood. And then she was like about to ask him out, but then the sister, which is her twin, um, flirts with him instead and then she like ends up dating the guy that she wants and so then she has like this big emotional breakdown like why does my sister get everything and I get nothing because it turns out that a gay was actually raised by her grandmother in the country instead of her family in Tokyo where Hannah was so Hannah basically I'll be calling her Hannah on accident I'm sorry you guys Americanness in me but um so Hana like gets everything and she gets love from her parents, whereas a gay has basically ignored and treated like basically you're not as good as your sister, so therefore I'll ignore you, mostly from her mother. And so she goes to a guidance counselor whose name is something. I'm just gonna call him Sensei, cause that's what freaking Ageha calls him the entire damn time. Like I'm remembering Sensei, but I know he has an actual name and Hana calls him it all the time. Why can't I remember his name? But basically, she's got a guidance counselor that she calls, goes to, and she calls him Sensei, and then she's like, I don't know, basically she forms a bond, and then like she's in love with him, and then stuff happens, and that's basically that. I won't give away spoilers, because this is a general review, and there won't be like a before section and an after section, so therefore I can't have a spoiler section, but um, my general review of it, it is really, really good to read. It is, what was it, eight volumes long, so it's like a decent amount of material. It doesn't go by too fast. It's also not needlessly too long. I feel like they tied up all the loose ends, really. I mean, there wasn't really anything that kind of left you going, okay, I don't know what's going on. If I had to give this a rating, I'd probably give it, I mean, out of like a five, I'd give it a four. There were some things that could have been done better, but... I don't know. I think Hana just in general really made me angry. Just the character of Hana. And I get that you're not supposed to like her, but at the end they make you like her. So, I don't know. I just feel like everything Hana does doesn't really make sense. And it, like they tie it up and they explain it at the end and they go over it and they're like, this is her personality and this is why she does all the stuff that she does and this is why she does this. But like, her sister's basically psychotic. Like, I can't even express in words how crazy Hana is. And basically, everybody's just like, it's okay, it's because you were hurt in the past, and I want to be a good sister. It's like, no, you bitch slap her. That is what you do. And I guess she does get bitch slapped a few times. Maybe I just, I don't know. H Hana just has too many problems. I take it back. I'd, I'd give this, I don't know. It's not perfect. I definitely know manga that's better than it. I think that's why I'm just not going to give it five stars, but... I don't know. It's it's definitely good, though. Definitely worth a read. It's a shoujo manga, if I haven't gone over this, or if you haven't figured it out from the description. But <laughs> it is um, a shoujo manga, and it's really, really good. I definitely recommend it. The next one I will talk about is Mosca. It is a manhwa by Young Hee Kim. Yeah, I can pronounce that. It's actually kind of old. 1998 is when the first one was released. I'm not entirely sure how many volumes it is. Oh, wait, 12. 12 volumes. I got this, you guys. Um, there's 12 volumes, so it is very long. And basically, it's about a girl um, named Azarella. 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 Um, and she's like, it's weird. Like, there's different races. It's a fantasy shoujo, I guess. Fantasy, fantasy action shoujo. Yeah, that's what I'll, I'll classify it as. Um, basically, she's a girl, and she's 
15? I think she's 15 or something. She's young, though, and um, she's from a race of people that live to be, like, 300 years old or something, but they all grow up normally until, like, a certain point, and then they all just kind of look the same for a few hundred years, I guess. And so, like, a lot of people look the same age as their parents, which is a little bit weird. Um, and so she's from a special thing, and then she's been raised because her parents abandoned, well, not really abandoned her. Um, her mother was killed, and so she was raised by an archmage whose name is Elihu, 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 something. My Korean is shoddy, if you haven't figured this out already. Uh, <laughs> but she's raised by this guy, and I guess he's in love with her or something. She grows up very beautiful, which, you know, had, like a part of me is like, this is a little bit pedo but I guess it makes sense. No, she's 19. She is 19 years old, not 15. That'd be really creepy if she was 15. She is 19 years old, and she's turning 20. But there's um, a guy who is one of the demon... I don't remember it technically. I probably should have tried to reread the beginning of this before. But he is um, the Devil King, I guess they call him. And he's been alive for, like, thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And, like, you get to use certain kinds of magic based on, like, how long you've lived. And so he's, like, super powerful because he's been alive for so long. And he's, like, a Belial. He's a Belial. And... I remember that because it's one of the dragon's names in Odin Sphere. Odin Sphere is saving me again. Thank you, Odin Sphere. I will review you one day in memory of you and how many times you've helped me be happy. But, uh, <laughs> video games, FTW. Um, so basically, like, the, she goes and for several reasons she ends up going back to the Devil King's castle and, like, he doesn't have a name, so you just call him the Devil King for a while. And basically, she ends up, like, becoming very attached to him and, like, befriending him. And then, like, he falls in love with her, but then she says, like, no. And so he, she's kind of friend-zoning him, but he's, like, super powerful, and so he doesn't usually take well to being told no. And so then he's, like, very, like, active in trying to get her to like him, but then, you know, he keeps failing. Yeah, a lot of crazy things happen. It's really, really good at the beginning, but I think I just have a problem overall with most manhwa in the fact that it starts off really good. Phenomenal beginning, phenomenal middle, phenomenal, like, art and, and plot and structure and everything in between is just beautiful and awesome and happy. But the endings of, like, 80% of manhwa that I read is just kind of like, Bajoo. like, I'm not sure if it's, like, a style in Korea. I'm not sure if it's just, like, a cultural difference. But it feels so, like, rushed, most of them. Like, you get stuff, like, very, very sweet, where everything's kind of tied up. A little weird, but tied up at the end. And then just every, like, a lot of ones, like, Mosca, it's just kind of the ending's like, whatever, we ran out of stuff to do, here's your ending. It just doesn't make sense most of the time. And I skimmed most of the ending, I'm not gonna lie. I seriously just skimmed it, because I didn't need to know most of it. I was in it for the shoujo ness of it. And then towards the end, it turned into, like, an action thing but it wasn't like cool action like fighting all the time it was like here's an explanation of all the stuff that we're doing and you don't really need to know because it's not important to the plot but I'm going to explain it anyways for like a book and a half and it just dragged out and the ending I mean it wasn't totally unfinished they tied up most of the loose ends but there is still just a lot of questions which might have been answered if the parts that I skimmed over weren't so boring. But, I don't know. And I love the beginning of Mosca. Like, if you just don't feel like finishing the book, I won't hold it against you. If you just want to make it up to, like, I don't remember. I think it was, like, book 10 I started skimming at. Um, I was looking more at numbers than actual books. But... I mean, the beginning of this, I was like, I'll give this, like, four. And then, like, the ending is what would make it be a five. But the ending wasn't there, and it actually dragged it back a bit. So I'd have to give this a two, just because the ending was horrible. And the ending is one of the most important parts of the story. But the beginning was really good. You just got to get the end in there. It just seems so rushed and random, but it wasn't rushed because it dragged on forever. I don't even know what to say about this. I mean, it might just be a cultural thing, again, like I said. Um, and then the last thing we're going to talk about is a kind of, sort of, Korean-Japanese thing. It's called Our Happy Hours in English, and the Japanese title is Watashi Tachi no Shiawase no Jikan. Jikan, yeah, that's the end of it, Jikan. <laughs> I don't know what it's called in South Korea, but um, 
basically the story itself was a novel that was written by Gong Ji Young, and she wrote this, I guess, I don't know what it would be called in Korean, though if I saw it, I probably wouldn't know how to pronounce it, so maybe it's a good thing that I don't have the actual title in front of me, but um, it turned into a manga, which was written by Mizu Sahara. You might know Mizu Sahara. She also did um, Bus Hashiro? Hashiro. Bus Hashiro. Bus Hashiru, Bus Hashiru, I can pronounce words. Um, she also was the one that did My Girl, and she did Voices of a Distant Star, if you know what that is. Basically, the story is, takes place in Korea, but it is by a Japanese artist. Um, but basically, it's like a girl and a guy, and the guy is on death row, and the girl, um, Juru, Juri, 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 I take it back, her name is Juri, 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 Juri. Um, basically, she's had like a really bad life, and she used to play piano, but she like gets really defensive about it, and the guy's on death row, and he like is basically just accepted the fact that he's gonna die, and he doesn't expect like forgiveness or anything, and he's just like, yeah. And he's like had a really crappy life, and the warden of the prison like knows he's had a crappy life, he's like, is it really his fault? that his life has been shit, and so there's a nun um, who is Jerry's aunt, and she, like, goes and visits this guy on death row, all t like, once a week or something, like, all the time, though, and, like, sends him letters, and he never replies, and so she asks Jerry to come with her, because Jerry just attempted suicide for, like, the bajillionth time, and instead of being put into a mental ward, she agrees to go off and do, like, some community service stuff with her aunt, and so she goes there, and then she ends up, like, talking to this guy, and, like, then they get along really well, and then they break down and tell their life story, and I won't go into too much detail, because this is only one volume, and, oh my god, though, I was pouring tears at the end. It was ridiculously sad, and it was so well written, and, I mean, the drawing, like, the art itself, Mizu, you make me so happy, thank you, wherever you are, thank you for being such a good artist, you have made my happiness level, like, skyrocket, and, and, Gong Ji Young, Wherever you are, thank you for being awesome, because this story is beautiful. And I'm really tempted to try to find an English version of this story, but I'd have to figure out the actual title of the story, probably. Though maybe the English thing, maybe it is already translated. I should look for this, because I want to read this story, because I was pouring tears, and <laughs> it was ridiculously sad. I would definitely give this, like, five. Like... I don't think this could have been done any better. And I bet, like, I almost want to give it a four, because I bet you anything when I read the book, I'd be like, the book is so much better, because that's always how it goes. But I, I want to give this as a manga by itself, as, like, its own separate work, five. It's just beautiful and gorgeous, and it's short, and I wish it was longer, but I understand that they were doing it because it was part of a book series, so it's kind of like how I really wish that um, Only the Ring Finger Knows was longer, but then I found out it was an actual book, and now I feel like the book is actually a little bit too long, so, or the book series, but I have to find out that the newest one, the last one was released, oh my god, I haven't checked in years, but, um, so those are the three that I'm going to review, Tashi Tashi no Shiwase no Jikan, oh, yes, I just said that really fast, and and, um, Mosca and Papillon. So yes, I just did those backwards. So yes, those are my reviews. Thank you very much for watching this, and hopefully it's not too incredibly long. Have a good day, and see ya. Bye!